Lent Week 3 Worship, 317-23, 11 in Connecticut, 3 p.m. And top of the afternoon to you, everybody. Lent service schedule, Week 4, is next Tuesday, 328, 4-4. Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday is 4-6. Easter service is 4-9. And all of this is said to change depending on what's going on at home. Also, possibly a change of venue. So, you might see one of these services from the train. Prelude today is the journey of faith. Thank you, Choir. That was very pretty. And yes, we do live in hope and walk by faith. Now, unfortunately, yesterday, history repeated itself again with Brian. You know, if he could just give us an answer of why things happened. You know, why did it happen? What did we do wrong? What can we do to correct these things? Basically, being blocked. Over nothing. We'll talk about that later in the message. Anyway, here are your announcements for today. 
The next trade trip is going to be to D.C., and that means February is on the way again, too. So that's why I'd like to tell you to be presented at 321 to 49 to full presentation sometime later this spring. Monday, Thursday, a good Friday, 4 sets and 4 7. Easter Sunday is 4 9. And with that in mind, we are not going to be doing a rebroadcast of February 24th. Service basically because that clearly shows me that he just does not want anything to do with us anymore or to try to work things out. And receive the call to worship. There's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. Kindness in God's mercy, and he is more than liberty. There is welcome for the sinner, and more graces for the good. There is mercy with the Savior. There is healing in his blood. For the love of God is broader, pure measure of man's mind. And the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. If our love were but more simple, we would take Christ at his word. And our lives would be illumined by the presence of our Lord. Lord, this afternoon we come before you on this St. Patrick's Day. As you are the living waters, we confess that we might be turned from you and wandered in our own wildernesses of fear and doubt. We have chosen to ignore those in need or to deal only passively with them. So today, by your spirit and in your word, continue to walk with us as we continue our Lenten journey. As we will glorify you this day and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. We will glorify. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty, we will bow before his throne. We will worship him in righteousness, we will worship him alone. Is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth, he is Lord of all who live. He is Lord of the universe, all praise to him we give. Hallelujah to the King of kings, hallelujah to the Lamb. 
Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, who is the great I am. All right, thank you. Anthem is Let Me Walk You Home. All right, thank you, choir. Very pretty. And that actually goes along the lines of what the message is going to be today. So we come to the place of prayer. 
this afternoon, and it's a time where we can lift each other up, both in good times and bad times. Obviously, we want to continue to pray for Brian and just hope that eventually he'll just come out of this place that he's in. Recognizing the fact that we are not the enemy. We are here just trying to help and trying to work things out. So that way it's all equal. But in the meantime, meantime, we continue to pray that we get through this class that I actually wrote a bonus essay called My Ideal Class in Frustrations with English 101 that I actually will read to you during the message. So basically it talks about, you know, what my ideal class is, you know, where is this coming from, all those sorts of things we read in, in the message. As always, I will give you opportunity to lift up those that you know, and the first song is 384 Spirit Song. Let the Son of God enfold you with His Spirit and His love. Let Him fill your heart and satisfy your soul. Oh, let Him have the things that hold you and His Spirit like a dove. Will descend upon your life and make you whole. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your lives. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your life. And my kindness on with hope. Let's pray. Lord, this afternoon we come before you, sometimes feeling like we can't do anything right, where we sometimes feel blamed for issues that, that we only wanted to try to resolve, but sometimes people just don't want our help. As mentioned last week, we want to help the situation, not hinder the situation. And sometimes people real, don't realize how intelligent we actually are and that we can see through the nonsense and just the usual things that seem, seem like never stop here in 2023. We live in a world where, where everybody just wants the quick answer. But why, we ask? Why? Why can't we have face-to-face -face conversation? Why can't we sit down and have a cup of coffee with Brian and just ask him, what happened? What could we do to make it better for him? Instead, people resort to, resort to childish ways of just cutting the communication off. But why, we ask. Unfortunately, those questions cannot be answered here. And, I, and unfortunately, those questions don't have an answer. What looked good was just thrown away like garbage. The need to want to feel loved, to want to feel accepted for who we are, just goes by the wayside. And it's not just in that situation, it's also the need to feel accepted and voiced in how we feel in, in a class that just continues to cause more headaches than it's worth. 
We thank you for a new opportunity, a new Wilbur. We thank you for the bird. We thank you for the opportunity to continue to bring these services to life week after week. As I think it is absolutely necessary. And just to have that peace of mind and heart. We're going to make mistakes. But sometimes there are second chances. As that will be talked about in the message. And for the viewers at home, we pause and give you the chance to lift up those that you know. And so it's to this end. You loved each and every one of us. We can develop patience with you, but also we need to develop patience with each other. Love one another as you have loved us. That is what Lent is all about. Just walking through these 40 days and 40 nights. Leading up to those moments. The moment of when you were welcomed, but then turned away. Nailed to the cross again. For no good reason. The famous. Blessed is he who comes in God's name. Will turn to crucify you. As it is in that prayer that you taught us. Say it together. Our father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. As earth and it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Operatory time, meaning that this is the time for you guys to subscribe to this channel and to continue to check out some of his other videos that I'm working on as well. There will be another backyard baseball video tonight as well with me doing the commentary. 
So the offertory today is Hear the Music. This is from a children's choir that was just set that was set in earlier this week. And will the ushers please come forward as we receive the afternoon's gifts and offerings? So hear the music. Please rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Lord, sometimes we forget to just hear the music and hear a faraway bell. We know that faraway bell is you. So take these gifts and multiply them and make yourself known throughout the world. As we continue our walk in this sprint semester, and we look forward to whatever else is in store the rest of the year as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Okay, so the reading today comes from Psalm 95 in Romans 5, 1 to 11. Come, let's shout praise to God. Raise the roof of the rock who saved us. 
Let's march into into his presence, singing praises, lifting the rafters for our, with our hymns. And why? Because God is the best. High king over all the gods. In one hand, he holds deep caves and caverns. With the other hand, grasps the high mountains. He made ocean. He owns it. His hands sculpted the earth. So come, let us worship, bow before him on your knees, before God, who made us. Oh yes, he's our God, and we're the people he pastures, the flock he feeds. Drop everything and listen. Listen as he speaks. Don't turn a deaf ear into the bitter uprising. As on the day of the wilderness test, when your ancestors turned and put me up to the test, for forty years they watched me at work among them. As over and over they tried my patience, and I was provoked. Oh, was I provoked. Can't they keep their minds on God for five minutes? Do they simply refuse to walk down my road? Exasperated, I exploded. They'll never get where they're headed. Never be able to sit down and rest. And now the Romans 5, 1 to 11. By entering through faith into what God has done, what God has always wanted us to do for us, wanted to do for us, set us right with him, make us fit for him. We have it all together with God because of our master Jesus. But, and that's not all. We throw open our doors to God and discover at the same moment that he has already thrown open his door to us. We find ourselves standing where we always hoped. We might stand out in the wide open spaces of God's glory, God's grace and glory, standing tall and shout our praise. There's more to come. We continue to shout our praise even when he even when we're hemmed in with troubles. Because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience in us, and how that patience in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. In alert expectancy such as this, we're never left feeling short changed. Quite the contrary, we can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. Christ arrives right on time to make this happen. He didn't and doesn't wait for us to get ready. He presented himself for the sacrificial death when we were too weak and rebellious to do anything to get ourselves ready. And what if we hadn't been so weak, we wouldn't have known what to do anyway. We can understand someone dying for a person worth dying for, and we can understand how someone good and noble can inspire us to selfless sacrifice. But God put his love on the line for us by offering his son in sacrificial death, while we were of no use whatever to him. Now that we are set right with God by means of this sacrificial death, the consummate blood sacrifice, there is no longer a question of being at odds with God in any way. If when we were at our worst, we were put on friendly charge with God by the sacrificial death of his son. Now that we're at our best, just think of how our lives will expand and deepen by means of his resurrection life. Now that we have actually received this amazing friendship with God, we are no longer content to simply say it in plot and prose. We say and shout our praise to God through Jesus the Messiah. Here ends the reading, and may God the blessing to the reading of his holy word. So, as I was starting to talk about earlier, Now that we kind of know where this, this was headed with Brian, it's obvious. It is so obvious that he just has this, he just has made it up in his mind that we are the, that we are the bad guy. And what that shows me is he's a narcissist. He is selfish. He doesn't want to understand the fact that we are here because he wanted us to be here. Now I don't. Now I know a lot of you don't like it when when you send somebody a text and then they and then it says seen but they don't answer you. 
Why? It takes two seconds to respond. He could have just said, you know, I can't talk right now, but I will call you back later, or I will call you at whatever time. Where is the common courtesy? There is no common courtesy with people like this. With people like him, there is always the idea that they feel like they have to have the upper hand. You're not finding the, you're not going to find a common ground with people like him. You're not. And what will happen is he will come back when he wants something. And you know what? We have to have the courage to say no. Because he's never been told no. I've said this a lot a lot about a lot of people. And it clearly is relevant to what we are talking about here. You can't find a common ground. You can't develop. It's like. You have to have patience of a saint to really deal with these people. It's like we don't have time. It's like we don't want to deal with these people. We don't want to feel like we're on the short end of the stick all the time. Think of what he's saying. Sacrificial death. Now. That means that, as we talked about last week on what the cross represents, remember, Jesus died as a human. So in human form, he could have lived his best life, but yet he goes to the cross and takes away the world's sin, the world's problems, and he puts it all in all itself. Whipped and tortured, but he didn't say a word. He was like a lamb taken to be slaughtered. Now, as I have talked about before, there are some times where you can have second chances in relationships. But the question is, how much are you willing to tolerate and what are you going to do? I mean, would it be the same? Would it be different? We don't know because we don't have the eight ball guns. And we don't have a crystal ball like we see in movies. Like, literally, I can't stand up here and say, oh, will the, like, oh, will the relationship be better? You're not going to, you're not going to get that answer because obviously, if they still wanted you, then obviously, you would not be looking for a second chance. Sacrificial death of Jesus basically saying, look, basically, that was his way of telling us, look, I'm willing to take all your problems and I'm going to take it to the cross. Meaning that being that all, all the problems of the world, he, he just took with him and put it on that cross. <clears throat> you may recall when we were talking about reliving the past, that's exactly what this, this is. Brian is stuck in the past. Now I'm being honest here. It's not like he'll watch these videos anyway. When you are stuck in the past and you think that everybody is the same, this is what happens. You get those same results. Because people see the diagnosis of someone who is on the spectrum or somebody that has special needs, they see that and they'll, they'll think, oh, he won't find out. Or like, or like, oh, like, oh, he'll say yes. Well, not really. We do know how to say no. This is what this developing patience is. As I talked about a few weeks ago, I know 
a new Boston is on the way because I have been involved in the conversations of looking for one. But I know I can't have one right now because I have to do something in order to get one. And that's to pay mom and dad back for my prized possession. Okay, so you figure, you know, a few months down the road, I can have one. Do I think that Brian is a bad individual? No. Again, we never wish ill will on anybody. I just I don't I just like I don't like how this went down. And certainly you guys wouldn't like if this was done to you too. You It's like we don't want to we don't want to be in this in this way of doing things, realizing that when you're dating somebody, and then all of a sudden it just gets turned off. Why? Because of the dating apps, the hookup apps, guys. Why would you still have those if you are with somebody? I'll tell you why. Because you don't know how to control your impulses. It's like you can't wait. You figure I was seeing him, what, Friday, Saturday? So if this didn't happen, I probably would be seeing him right now? It's like, where is the common courtesy? Where is the common sense? Just because everybody uses them, does not mean that we have to use them. Excuse me, my shirt is on backwards. Okay. If you're going to have those things, then obviously maybe you should not be looking for a relationship because anybody would tell you that if you're in a relationship, then you don't need those. It is a very sick, sad world we live in. Obviously, he would. Obviously, he thought that I would never have found out. Well, guess what? There are ways of. There are ways of finding out. So what do we do? What do we do now? Do we sit around here and wait? For him to make up his to finally make up his mind no we can't do that because that would be given into him we're not it's like we're not playing cat and mouse anymore we're not going to give into him i've actually been conversed with somebody up in nova scotia that actually has been watching these videos and actually he's he said last night you know what he's gotta let him go as much as hard it is to let somebody go that you thought had potential, we just got to do it for our own well-being. Obviously, when we resume play at school next week, then, you know, it'll give us something else to think about. I mean, like, could you be given a second chance with people? Absolutely. It depends on what you did that peed him off. If it was something minor like this, then most likely, yeah, you would be given you would be given a second chance. Because, you know, you could go back in and edit what and edit what you were talking about. But if it's something major like maybe you cheated on somebody. Maybe somebody came along that you ended up sleeping with. Maybe it depends on how depends on the emotional maturity of somebody.
it actually I'm at now I'm gonna read to you this document that I wrote about my frustrations with English one oh one, which clearly resembles this idea of finding the common ground. In every endeavor in life, there are some things we all must do, whether we like it or not. This spring 2023 semester has led me to a class that I thought was something different. English 101, also known as composition, is not the ideal class for someone like me. As suggested by the tutor, this document will explain what my ideal class is and some of the frustrations which leads to the rant and assignment. What is my ideal class? My ideal class is one where the instructor goes through the assignments together with the student and has an online supplement. Most other cl courses I have taken has had some type of online supplement. For example, in CSA 145 database management, that has one which is extremely useful and much more structured or valuable for those with organized black and white thinking. When in a class like this one, where there isn't much structure and doing meaningless work, that is where those innermost thoughts and ranting come from. So basically, when it comes time to doing things that I really find, it's like, you know, what's the point? You know, it's it's the innermost thought, and it's those it's the impulse to want to say something, even though we know we can't say anything. Is it all unwelcome news here? No. Surprisingly, doing quite well here for someone who says they hate this class. Hate in quotation marks. Remember, hate is a very strong word, so might could have said dislike. Word study and getting a new boss is the is the incentive to keep the line moving. I keep reminding myself that if I walk away from this class, guess what? My wallet suffers, and all the progress I have made in Bolivia, that comes to an end. Where is the behavior coming from? What is the root? The behavior is coming from several separate places. One is feeling like not being heard and ignored. So basically feeling like when I go to voice my opinion or, you know, wanting to ask her a question or, you know, give her a suggestion, it's not being heard. Basically, it is ignored. It is very aggravating when trying to voice my opinion or suggestion things suggesting things be done in a certain way, then they shut down and basically a waste of breath. Another is being groggy and cranky in the morning. Sleeping is an issue because it is broken sleep. It's the, you know, the four hours, you know, you get up, go to the bathroom and whatnot, and then go back to sleep for maybe two or three hours. But then basically you're still wide awake, as it says here, at basically 2 a.m. Not getting a proper night's sleep on Monday nights is also another reason why I feel this way. Basically because I think in my mind, it's like, oh, it's like, oh, I got to go to that class tomorrow. The mind doesn't shut off. And that's why, and that's also, I think, a reason why it's led to where we are. Personal problems with relationships, as I've talked about here today, and home life is all carried to this class where my mind does not turn those thoughts off for the three hours. So basically, I think Brian was in my head during class, especially in the last couple of weeks. And I think just not being able to just turn that off and just focus in on what is being done in the classroom. The root of the problem is no motivation or lack of interest, for the obvious. For example, the peer reviews are working in groups I could live without. Writing a document or something that is confidential, like this is, should only be read by the instructor. In my mind, this is how it should go. A pre-write, a first draft submit to the register and her, second draft submit and then move on. So basically, don't take these intermediate steps of basically saying, you know, like, oh, how do you think you did on this? How do you think you did on that? It's like, no, no, it's just do what we got to do. And then that is it. And then put it to bed. Uh, what can be done in order to make it through the second half of the semester? I think having the choice of what to write about is essential in the second half. 
Maybe for the Nets outside, discuss what taking a, a class that is light versus one that isn't light. Uh, research paper, uh, basically, you know, follow the directions and maybe do something of interest, like maybe the history of Fenway, uh, the history of Metro North, things like that. Speeches and essays are basically the same thing. If you think about it, uh, no more doing things like concentric circles, awkward, and not to mention, uh, couldn't hear what the other person was saying, and you might, and basically left it there. So the thing is, guys, writing this all out, to her is a good idea. So that way she can look through it and she can read it for herself. See, this is developing patience. Learning how to develop patience with somebody that has no interest in being there. Somebody that doesn't want to be there. But sacrificial death of Jesus. As you know, the crucifixion is talked about in all of the New Testament. It's basically told how it was done in the four Gospels. But then later on, it's just talked about briefly, of like, you know, why it happened, and what these things are. And actually, I did get a response from her earlier today about this. So I'm going to read it to you now. Okay, so here's what she said. Thanks for reflecting on the ideas further. I'm not able to view the text of your bonus after through the link, but you can certainly print one and bring it to class Tuesday, and I'll take a look. But that's what we really do. As we have discussed extensively, the goal for me as the instructor of this course is to help students successfully achieve the learning outcomes for English 101. Although I wish you didn't experience such frustration with the course, rest assured that I put a great deal of thought into every assignment we do, as I have done, since I began teaching college-level English courses in 2011, you may dislike the class, the methods, and the assignments that you have shared, but you continue to do well. So basically, it's basically some of this may still be all locked up in my mind and things like that. But it looks, it sounds like she's willing to work with me. So, you know, this is developing patience in this class. Developing patience in the class is a lot easier than developing patience with some people. That's for sure. And what I think we are going to continue to do here is we're going to just continue to look at this. And as we get closer to the cross, we're also going to look at, you know, why did, why did this happen and so on. And that is today's message. Amen. Closing him is Jesus paid it all. Hear the Savior say, Surely it is is small, Child of weakness, watch and pray, Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, 
He washed it white as snow. Would ye thy fight, thy power, and thy alone can chase the leper's spot and melt the heart of stone? Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin and left a crimson stain. He washed him white as snow. Nothing good am I, whereby thy grace to clay. I'll wash my garments white in the blood of Calvary's land. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed him white as snow. When before the throne. Nice who in thy name are gathered here. This was the brightness of thy face, and be forever near. Ah. Receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he continue to help you develop patience, even with some people. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you for watching, everybody. Have a great week, and I will see you next Friday.